not the one of the key features here is we uh, the way Stu's designed these limit orders is see that green text at, at populating at the right as you remove the slider. Mm, yep. That means that there's no way to trade against yourself. Meaning you can hit the market button and it'll sell it at market. Like if you click the little price that says market. It says and it tells you if you, you you want to buy at market, just go ahead and swap it. There's no point in sitting in a limit order. You know, it's a waste you, you spend too much gas doing so, right? It's cheaper to swap it uh, at market. But meaning that this means that you cannot trade against yourself or accidentally fat finger do anything dumb to make a bad decision. You can always you're only going to trade it in, in a way that's uh, beneficial to you when you trade. That's what that means. That slider gives you a percentages, or on the bottom when you see uh, where it says die per pulse, that, that the the, uh, the string of numbers there, which is your ratio, you can dial that in manually if you, as well. So if you move the slider a little bit, you can see all right numbers, and you go down in there and manipulate those numbers manually as well if you want to dial in in, in, in between those half percent uh, options. So it gives you options, and you can, and you can that, that die uh, per pulse. You can t you can click that. That's your ratio change. If you if you were looking at things at different price uh, uh, a price uh, feed analysis. So I just want to see too. If, if for example, if I got some pulse and I wanted to buy some Tetra, you know, can you walk us through how to set limit orders for for Tetra, right. for example. All right. So you go through, <clears throat> you figure out how much you want, how much you want to pay better than current market rate. So you can be five, half a percent better or, or whatever. You set your point. Um, and then however many, you know, whatever you want to do. And then you slide it to wherever you would, you would like to buy your Tetra at whatever price point you think you, you, it's going to go down to is basically what you're doing. Right. Uh, from, from current market rate, then you'd go down there and then, you place an order and it would go through, you'd have to approve. And then after the approval process, you place the order and the order would execute and be, and be placed in the, in the, uh, in the con smart contract to be executed once it's at price point. Okay. So for example, I got, I got this PLS, I got dollars worth of PLS. I want to pick up Tetra. Can you explain what is the, like the plus 2%? Am I trying to get, you're buying I'm it. Just, Mm -hmm. Better than the current market rate is what it means. That means you get it two percent right. cheaper than it's for sale right now. So, so if I think That's it's going to drop fifty percent, I'd say, okay, well, I want to pick up fifty percent cheaper than today. I'm going to set my slider to fifty percent, and then Correct. do that. Correct. Okay. And then, so you have that option. Then at the bottom, you can set your your time same uh, time frame. You want the order to be opened. You have the days. It says seven days. You, you can pick your Preset time, or you go to that calendar and pick and pick a, a, a calendar day as well. Sweet. So, so you can those are customizable things you have. Christmas with that. Now, again, at the top, at that little uh, gearbox, at the little gear at the top, as your slippage, which is very important to set. Right now, you you have a one percent slippage set. Now you can set it to wherever you want manually. There, just type it in. But this is where understanding. And you can change the receiver address as well, just like what you can in the swap. Yeah, but but you can yeah, you, all that can be done. Sure. So uh, it's important people understand how slippage works. So and that's why the disclaimer is on the front when you click this when you first uh, enter in the working with Omnis, because th this is not an order book limit order like uh, some some centralized exchanges have and maybe been used to in the past. Uh, because you're dealing with decent, uh, decentralized exchanges and you're aggregating prices through many of them, uh, the price point, when you set a price point on a limit order, there's no guarantee you will get it. There's several factors that are in play that will affect the uh, success rate of the limit order being deployed. Some of them are uh, high volatility. Some of them are, are slippage rates. That is, when a block, a block is populated you know, and there's all the data, and people, and it's a high volatility, and a lot of people want to buy the same asset. If you're in the mix, if your slippage is lower than everybody else, you won't, you, they'll just bypass you and the price will move past your point. Um, if there's a big, big buy in the block that you're in, so to speak, when you have a limit order, sometimes it blows past you because your slippage uh, range is not enough and it goes past your range before it can, it can uh, populate. Sometimes, though, you do hit it in a, in a, in a, in a big uh, buy or sell. 
and you have, depending on which side of the trade you're on, you could be benefit by even getting extra tokens. Let's say you want to sell it. Let's say you sell a, a token at a dollar, and the, somebody buys it to dollar two, you may end up selling it for a dollar one or whatever, and get more token, more, more value out of your sale. But the same is true on the opposite side because it, it is the other side of that is if you're trying to uh, sell at a dollar and somebody sells it down through you and you may end up selling at 95 cents or 90 cents and you get fewer tokens, maybe better than market rate, but still you won't be where you were just because of how the dynamics are in uh, the, uh, the, the slippage and the liquidity and all the things that happen in blockchain on a decentralized level. Yeah. Can you compare that with, uh, you know, I, I we we're talking in the green room about, uh, like it's hard to get match orders to place and, and other places. I'm sure people have had problems and, and that messing up. So it's, it's how it will on this be different. Will it be easier to get orders hit? Is it just a matter of liquidity and blockchain factors? How does that work? It, it's the, the it, it's not going to be any easier. I think they're both, both types of, I mean, ma the way match works is similar in some sense. Um, but, but they have more volume more, and more, more people running through. So there's probably more, um, uh, opportunities, but, with this, because we're pulling the data directly from the, the DEXs and we're not using order books or, or Oracle services or any third party like, you know, CoinGecko or whatever, you know, we are using the, the data directly from the chain. Therefore, it's uh, going to populate the data and aggregate the data. And your limit or deployment is based upon your understanding of the market, your understanding of, 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 the, of the assets, the pair you're, you're looking at primarily more likely going to trade through so the thickest pair typically right and the liquidity and then on top of that you got to think out where you would you set your slippage to get it deployed and there's nothing we can do to tell you how, what how to do that that's a market driven of variables and we there's nothing anybody can do to predict those things you never know when a wick's going to happen a buyer's going to buy a lot or sell a lot i mean we just had a big you know, i think just a few minutes ago mentor just had a big buy i saw it come through and so nobody could have predicted what was going to happen. So, yeah, this is just, uh, but yeah, these are things, these are just the tools that we were providing to the community and they work. We've all been, I've had successful trades uh, all for the last couple, you know, about a week or so. Um, and I've, I've, I've had a little more miss myself only because it's a slippage correctly. And we tested out with high slippage, low slippage, you know, and, and with high amounts of money, low amounts of money, we, we, we kind of, uh, you know, did all, all everything you could that could possibly happen with far as you know volatility and stuff, and th sometimes it just it just happens. And so, but we, we are having a new feature that's going to be added to Amos here very shortly. Is let's say you have a limit order uh, set and the market moves against you, you, know, you blows past your limit order, and now you're out of range. Well, every time you if you cancel the limit order, you have to pay a fee again, right? We're going to offer you the opportunity to edit your limit order without having to redeploy it by changing the uh, the ratio, changing your slippage and all those things, and your price point where you want to hit. So that'll be an added feature here coming out on the, probably the next update. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this is this is becoming a place to really do some, you know, some, some uh, set some orders and just be a place to, again, that's what I want to walk through too. Um, maybe we'll do that. We'll quickly talk about, you know, uh, well, actually, it kind of ties into that. What are the situations? Because, again, people are like, oh, limit orders, oh, boring. What I do with those? Like, yeah, I'll get a better price when the price dips or whatever. Okay, yeah, that solves the thing. It's not, but what are some of the, you know, more exciting scenarios where not they all, not only just solve a problem, but, hey, even with USDL, drop, you know, we talked on the show a couple weeks ago about, um, you know, if <laughs> if we had limit orders at the time with, uh, with Omnis, maybe could have picked up some, um, some drops or uh, or otherwise the, the, the best price on some of the stable coins that were new and just uh, not quite a dollar. Uh, I don't know how, do you remember how far USDL went? I remember seeing it in the 90s. Uh, yeah, it went down to 80 something. It's the lowest point, 89 or something like that. And the highest was $1.40 at, at the gate. Um, I was, I got, I got back on, Tom, they launched my work day. So I got on a couple hours if they launched and I had access to the limit orders and I placed them and I utilized them to test them out. That was, that, that was a good testing round for us because we needed to check, you know, things. It worked great. I mean, I was able to pick up, you know, large spreads from like anywhere from uh, 92 cents to $1.05, you know, and stuff like that. And those are it's just an instant. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, if it's redeemable, that's just an instant, you know, five, 10, 15% gain. Right. Exactly. You know, I was able to, you know, collect pretty good bit of pulse and stuff and, and USDL d- during these trades. You know, I wasn't like sticking big money, but I was do- mostly just testing out the, the, the product, you know, was m- our goals, but if it was functional and worked and it was profitable. And so these are tools that you can use to take advantage of the volatility in the market. Right. And things like new tokens like, uh, like USDL and stuff. And guess what's coming up next is Power Cities Earn. That's the next yep. one coming out. All right. Jess and I already talked about this the other day. So, um, you know, this is an opportunity for people to really get in there and uh, take advantage of the stable coin. And then if um, if Jacob gets pulse out, I'll go off the ground. That's another stable coin, you know. And then once the stable's out, you can arb them, right? So those are just opportunities that people have, as well as you can ratio trade between pulse and pulse acts if you wanted to. Just set your limit order. And when the ratio is in your, in your favor, that you want, just trade it. See, so the, all these are options people can, you know, use to, uh, to increase the size of their bags using these tools because it's hard to be at the computer twenty four seven to catch all these wicks. I'm just noticing too on this. <clears throat> I'm wondering because you know I'll expect something like okay, I I I'm, I want to trade one because English. I want to trade one die for uh, you know eighty cents for the right like i want i want to pay one die for a dollar 21 usdo like can you talk about that and like how to make things you know uh maybe you gotta you gotta speak the same language on the interface you know to get what you want yeah i mean so this is all so this is not necessarily built in dollar terms per se this is more ratio trading right that's because that's really what crypto is a ratio game it's not necessarily in dollar terms though most of us think in dollar terms we want to you know i want to and this you're actually saying that same thing i want to take you want to buy usdl for 80 cents so in doing so you get a dollar 21 1.21 of them right for a dollar maybe something like maybe something like something like this yep there you go there it says the same thing right yeah but now you but look look at the so that if you but that's a number but is that the right percentage, right? Because it has you is historically, let's say you don't try to make a trade up, you want to make some do some uh, some swing trading. Historically, has that happened before? Yes or no? Right. Ask yourself that question. You look at the chart, do some TA, right? Well, no, it hasn't. So you look at historical data and you plan out. Okay, in this much time frame, it typically does this kind of range. I will set orders accordingly to for them to deploy based on setting my slippage up properly at that a given time say in three months or two months or six or 30 days or, or 15 days or whatever. Right. That's how you have to think about it. So when I was fooling with USDL and, and, and pulse is obviously I was in short time frames because I was watching the, the second chart. I was like, okay, I see what it's doing now, how it's trending. I can then make these choices. And even if I sold below peg, but I bought at 92 cents, I was still making and sold at 99. I still made, you know, you know, seven cents there. Right. It didn't. I'd have to wait to go above peg to make 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 the profit. I still made the profit even at the below peg sale. Now, had I waited and I mean, try to catch a wick, I might have got one at dollar four or whatever. But that's a that's a personal choice, and it's just a way to kind of uh, play with it. And people can you just can play with the to- tools, use small amounts of money, try them out, and and see how it works. Uh, get used to the slippage and stuff like that because it, it is a learning curve. But uh, we're here in the chats to help. Uh, we have, like I said, we have the support on the uh, link and we'll have more data in the future about uh, some of the details. Um, and we have another, we, we will have another feature that will be added to. So not only will we be able to uh, uh, edit your orders that, that you want, uh, if they, if they don't, uh, if the market moves away from your order, but you also be able to do a, a, a secondary order in, in conjunction with the first order. Meaning there's no term for this, but we, we're kind of calling it a, Swing trade limit order. That is, let's say I want to buy asset at low price, and then I want to sell at the asset when the price moves up, say ten percent. So I can do that one with one limit order, set the range where it will do that, and if those conditions are met, it will it will it will it will proceed and deploy based on slippage and all, and I will have my profit at the end. 